Aloha, all of my paranormal people. Welcome back to Insane Disappearances. I'm Matt Kier, your host. I'm ready to give you another story or case to um, listen to. Uh, <clears throat> this story or case that I've been reading up on is about a man named James Arthur. Uh, he went missing around 72808 at Biasor Road, Iron Lake Reservoir in Madura, California. He was at the age of 67. He was about 6 feet and 189 pounds. He was a pretty big dude. Uh, okay, starting off, James Arthur was a retired lieutenant colonel in the California Air National Guard. Hmm, very prestigious. Um, he was a lifetime military man with excellent uh, survival skills. On Monday morning, July 28th, 2008, he uh, told his family that he was going to drive to the area of Star Lake to take some photos. He told the family that he would be back before it was to get dark. He never returned. Um, excuse me for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, like I said, he, uh, he never returned. The family called the Madura County Sheriff. During the height of the search, over 100 sardine searchers and, uh, participated in covering the hills and valleys of the area. Uh, the teams centered on three separate regions, Iron Lake Trailhead, Grizzly Lake, Junction Lake, and Bear Island Lake. This area of the Sierra National Forest has many small lakes that are very picturesque. This region was logged uh, 50 years ago, but has since then grown over. <clears throat> it is very dense and rugged, with many large rock, uh, rock um, outcroppings. On Tuesday at 12.30 p.m., searchers found James' uh, Dodge Ram pickup parked at the entrance, of, uh, the entrance to Iron Lake Reservoir on Beasore Road. The sheriff stated that there was no evidence of foul play at the truck. James's truck was found at an elevation of 7,000 feet. Searchers were told that James was wearing an orange shirt and carrying a walking stick. Madura County Sheriff John Anderson stated that he had known James for over 20 years. If he was up and around and walking, you would have run into him. Now, this case kind of confuses me because, okay, first of all, we're talking about a lifetime military man and an expert in survival skills. So it's very likely that someone of his stature and credibility and skills would have disappeared the way that he did, especially on a beautiful summer day of all days. You know, um, now there was a notation in the search that was recorded that the canines, of course, was involved. And, of course, obviously, they never picked up the scent. So they failed in that area. Um, uh, let me see. And it's, it's very doubtful that someone with his type of skills actually wandered off, you know, the main trails. And uh, he was carrying a camera. So maybe, just maybe, he might have taken a picture of something that he wasn't supposed to see. And the people or whatever saw him and they abducted him now was it aliens ufos uh bigfoot um i don't know i don't know what it could have been i mean maybe like i said i don't know i mean he obviously took a picture of something because they obviously didn't find his camera and that's another thing about all these cases when if they have a camera like say the stacy Ayers case she had a camera and it was never recovered uh, the only thing they did find was the lens cap, because that's the least important item from a camera. Now, everybody that has had a camera or cell phone, it was either smashed to pieces or it just vanished right along with the person. Um, and in this case, obviously, it was the same thing. Now, um, let's see. Now, okay, okay, a statement of the sheriff regarding the fact that there was no evidence of foul play at the truck. That concerns me too, because um, David Pilatus, of course, was saying that he retrieved the files on the case, and it stated that there was evidence. Um, uh, it would uh, the, let me see. 
but his things were found elsewhere, you know. Um, so obviously his things was either in different areas of the of the of the forest. I don't know, but um, they also they also said that the um, searchers got a chance to talk to certain people who knew him, and the question is, what did they say? Nobody knows because they didn't mention that part either, or at least they didn't mention what they said. Um, the area east of where James disappeared it was a very wild, very open, and extends for over 30 miles without uh, without a large road, without large roadways or, or cities. So it was just all trees and brush and trails and stuff like that. So it, that was a pretty massive area. Um, let's see. Now the fact that James was wearing an orange hunting vest means that he should have been easy to spot, but that's another key point in these cases. A lot of the people that disappear are wearing bright clothing. Now I've heard some folklore. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hold on. I've heard some folklore stories about people um, uh, being in contact with these like creatures or fairies that make people disappear who are wearing bright clothes and they are attracted to the bright clothes and all of a sudden they disappear i don't know too much about that uh folklore but that's what has been told about that uh but other than that his body was never found you know so and none of his clothes from what they said has been found anything you know it's just he just vanished off the face of the earth you know that's a big problem with most of these cases where people just vanish off the face of the earth it's ridiculous so now for those who still like to hike jog or walk the trails or even camp or whatever the case may be there's a few things that you have to know or have to be doing when you're out there in the woods or in the forest or even at these national parks first and foremost always make sure you have a personal transponder locator okay number one number two always carry a gun okay especially if you have a license all right with the laws they have now you can carry a gun anywhere now that i've heard from george knapp that and david Pilatus that in certain parks um the laws of carrying a gun whether you have a license or not uh has changed i think if you're let's just say you live where i live but you go to Yosemite National Park or um, any of the other parks. Uh, one of those, in one of those parks, I think you have to have a license in that state in order for you to carry a gun into a park. I don't know. I don't know if that also applies to uh, PIs or policemen. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, make sure you have a gun. Now, if you do get lost, God forbid. Pull the trigger on your gun three times every 20 minutes. Therefore, whoever is looking for you will know that you are lost. Okay? There's now, there's a lot of hunters that I've heard about who have vanished. They never use their gun for some reason, and you would think they would know that. Now, if they were a cop, they probably would have. I don't know. But that is one of the things that you have to make sure you do. Shoot your gun off three times every 20 minutes so that they'll know that you are lost you know because somebody's going to hear it regardless you know it's going to sound muffled in the distance but they're still going to hear it they're going to know that somebody's out there and they're lost so they're going to go be, they're going to go looking for them now there's a good chance that they still might not find you you know you know it doesn't on the um the cases that have come came up about people who have gotten lost who are, actually have a gun uh but uh let's see what else um oh yeah and if you're with a group always stay within a tight group never go astray that means don't fall behind and don't get ahead of everyone now there, there have been cases where a person would say okay i'm just gonna run ahead while you guys rest and um i'm gonna run around this corner and i'll meet you at such and such a place okay now they get their rest they get up and start jogging to where they're supposed to have been and then when they get there they're nowhere to be found Okay, and then like two weeks later, they found dead somewhere in a box cavern or a crevice or whatever, you know, with no cause of death on their body. Okay, weird as heck, you know, half naked as usual, you know. So, 
But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on that story. Um, there's a couple of other choice things that I wanted to mention um, when it comes to you being out there. Um, if I think about it, I'll mention it in my next video. But for right now, always imparting aloha, mahalo, and ahuiho. And of course, that means in Hawaiian, till we meet again. Be blessed, guys. Peace.